The title of the message is The Spirit of Peace, okay? And uh, last Sunday, is there anything special about last Sunday? We celebrate something. Do you remember what was that? We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I put it as the most uh, incredible event in human history, right? And that was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I wanted to actually share this morning from that chapter of uh, uh, Gospel of John, chapter 20. Okay, and I want to look at some a different uh, 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 like aspect of that chapter. So I want you to open up your Bible to uh, Gospel of John, uh, chapter 20, and verse 19. Then the same day at evening, and being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, and where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, and Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Okay? So, do you know what day of the week that is? The first day of the week? What's the first day of the week for you? No, some says Monday and all this thing. You know, when is the Sabbath day, to be correct, for the uh, Jewish calendar? Sabbath day is Saturday, right? So the first day of the week means Sunday. So Sunday, the very early in the morning, that's the day that Jesus was resurrected. Okay, we saw how the Mary Magdalene, she was really longing to see the Lord, and she was searching everywhere, you know, and asking everybody, whether it's an angel, even Jesus himself, and he was asking, where have you seen, you know, who took my Lord away, and so on. Okay, so that was the same day. So, but except for the Mary Magdalene and other people, they haven't met the Lord Jesus who is risen. So what is the last image they would carry in their heart as a disciple? For those who perhaps seen him from afar apart, or I don't know, but the Bible says they all deserted him, they all ran away. Even Peter, sort of, uh, when Slave Gill challenged him, that, oh, you are with Jesus. No, 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 he swear and he cursed and he uh, 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 took off. So I don't know how many actually disciples. I know that the, the youngest one, on the 15, so the disciple, you know, the underage, you know, this youngest one, his name was John, you know, he was sort of close enough so that Jesus, while he was hung on the cross, he said to his son, you know, this is your mother, you know, pointing, well, not pointing, you know, just a, 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 a mother of Jesus, Mary. Okay, so this, uh, that disciple, John, he actually carried on, and he took the well-being of uh, looking after the uh, uh, mother of Jesus, Mary, all his life. So they, you know, they were mainly staying in the region of Ephesus, okay? And uh, 90 some years old, and she passed away from there. And same with the John, the, uh, uh, the Apostle John, he, he died somewhere in his 90s. Anyway, but these people, their, most of their image of Jesus is that, uh, what was that? He was bleeding. Okay, and he was suffocating, and he was struggling, and people mocking, teasing, and, uh, and that was the image they had. So if you were one of those disciples, and what would have been the state of mind in your, in your heart? You know, one moment you thought, this Jesus of Nazareth is the promised Messiah. You confess, you spoke and you believe that he is the Messiah, son of living God, and yet that powerful, meant to be the uh, son of David, that Messiah powerlessly captured by all these uh, uh, soldiers and the, the, uh, the, the condemned by the uh, governor, Pontius Pilate. And he was spit at, slept, and people mocked, and the soldiers took his clothes and, and tear. And all that shame and pain and suffering, 
He was so powerless, he was dragged by these soldiers. And it was uh, such a shocking thing because the same disciples they have seen at the command of Jesus, what took place? This mighty storm suddenly got silenced. They've seen the Lord walk on the water. They've seen the Lord raising the dead man alive not too many days ago, and his name was Nazareth. So they've seen all this thing, and yet Jesus, he was carried, you know, that way. And he was crying out, Ava, Ava, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And all this picture is such a shocking thing. And none of these disciples would predict or even anticipate something like that could happen to their Lord, to their Master. So what would be the next thing? You know, wow, if that sort of thing could happen to our Lord, our Rabbi, our Master, what could happen to me, like someone like nobody? You know, I've been following Jesus, but I'm only a fisherman. I'm only a tax collector. I'm only this and that. Wow, that's is scary. I don't think I have what it takes to face all these authorities, you know, this wrath of the uh, Jewish leaders. You know, he, they were cheering when Jesus said, you sons of vipers, and Jesus said, you whitewashed tomb. And uh, Jesus was, was, was actually pointing out all the, the hypocrisy, all the uh, uh, toxic spiritualities that they were uh, spreading. And, and when Jesus was pointing out, and there's a huge mob of, of people, crowd, cheering on, and uh, when you stand next to Jesus and all these disciples would feel this sense of uh, empowerment and a sense of like a cheer in their heart. Yes, that's my Lord, and that's our uh, a Messiah. And yet now it's different. They have heard the loud screaming of people crucify him, crucify him. We don't want that Jesus. We want a Barabbas, you see? And they have seen the, the season has changed. Things has changed. So in their heart was filled with fear and confusion. If you were one of those disciples, what will be your next five-year plan of your life? You cannot have any plan and any idea because it's been only so fresh in your mind that your dear Lord has been crucified three days ago. And some people, to make it even worse, some people, some of the a, a woman who used to be demon-possessed, speaking and talking to people that, you know, I've seen the Lord. You know, like one of the disciples would think, you're right. <laughs> you know, like Tui you know, commercial, like, you're right, sort of thing. You know, some of them, maybe Thomas, I don't know, you know, there's uh, some other Philip, well, I don't know, more realistic people, you know, uh, they may say, well, gosh, that doesn't help. You know, crazy woman running around saying that the Lord is risen and all sort of things. So that is the picture. So this is, this is really confusing and uh, a moment of fear, in darkness, and the doors were fully shut because they had fear of the Jews. And in the midst of it, did they invite Jesus? Were they praying that Jesus to appear to them? Mm -mm. They just hiding. And then, without even opening the door, Jesus came in and stood in the midst and said to them, what was the first word that Jesus uttered to these people? And that is, the peace be with you. Could you say that word to someone next to you? Because this is the rhema word of God for today. Because when I was praying, Lord, you know, each week I pray, Lord, what do you want me to carry? What is the actual rhema word of God to the people? Actually, that is the word, the first word that Jesus spoke to his disciples who were so troubled and full of fear. Peace be with you. I know what you are going through. You know, I know God knows what is all going on in your life. 
so much of fear and trouble and confusion, you, you just don't know how that day will end. You have no idea what the tomorrow will bring. In that moment of uncertainty, the Lord spoke to his disciples, Peace be with you. If you say it in Hebrew, it will be shalom. Don't ask me the be with you part. You know, I just know the shalom part. Okay? And, uh, but it was written, but it was written in Greek. So it's erene, uh, uh, you know, as the uh, word for a uh, Greek word, is that, uh, you know, a tranquility and uh, the wholeness. You know, the idea of war, anything to do with the war or struggle, it actually implicates something is divided. Are you with me? Would you agree? Why are there two people fighting? Or why are the two nations fighting? Because they could not agree. They have two different opinions. So those two things, either ideology fighting, either different opinions, you know, they do not agree. And there's a war. The peace, the sense of peace is that there is no more division. They agree. They could live in harmony. The word shalom in Hebrew sense is the uh, sense of harmony, that you have not only ceasefire sort of thing, you have harmony with your creator. Okay? There's no more enmity. And uh, you have a, a shalom relationship. Once you have a shalom relationship with your God, the creator, then you can have shalom relationship with the people around you. Okay, and also you can have shalom relationship with your environments, whether it's a material and the possessions and all these other things. Okay, and then if you're a farmer, you plant a seed of, let's say, fig tree or uh, like uh, any of the uh, uh, fruit bearing tree, that they will produce fruit. So you can expect this fruit to bear in a, a certain season. So that's the, all the picture. Of how many? And God, you know, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. Peace be with you. And uh, verse 20, when he had said this, and he showed them his hands and his side, then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. You see the drastic change of their mood, their circumstance? Because when they saw the risen Lord, and when the Lord says shalom, when the Lord says peace be with you, and, uh, and the Lord actually show them, you know, don't just blame uh, Thomas alone, because uh, all these other disciples, when they saw uh, that his hand and his side, what, what, what's on his side? You know, there's a, a spear gone through to make sure that he was dead, and uh, Jesus, he was risen, but he shows these uh, uh, marks, you know, and the disciples, and they were so glad when they saw the Lord. And um, so Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Why you say twice, especially in the uh, Bible, when someone, especially Jesus, says something twice? That means it is very, very important. And same, th same way in the Old Testament Bible, uh, like when God speaks to his people, you, you carefully watch, you know, when you read Bible, when God calling like Moses or so-and-so, usually he calls twice. Moses, Moses, you know, Jacob, Jacob, or somebody, you know, calling twice. So it's not accidentally you calling somebody else's name. God knows exactly who he's calling, and he... It confirms. And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say this to you. You know, do you use the word truly? Okay, same here. Jesus is using this word. Peace to you. Peace be with you. And Jesus bring the message of peace to the people who were so troubled and full of fear. And, um, and, and as the Father has sent me, and I also uh, send you. Father... God sent the Son, Jesus Christ, into this world with the message of what? Message of peace. 
and now I have completed the requirement of just God, that I became a sacrificial offering on behalf of you, and I paid in full. What is the receipt of it? It is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now all is done, and you can bring this message of peace to the rest of the, uh, rest of the world. Okay? So that is the main purpose of Jesus for 40 days after he was resurrected, speaking to his disciples about the message of uh, peace, message of gospel must be preached all the way till the ends of the earth. Okay? And um, so let's look at some more of this aspect of uh, a peace. When Gospel of John, chapter 14 and verse 27 it talks about a little bit more about peace that Jesus can bring and Jesus will bring. Uh, this is what of Jesus. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let's face it. When you are living this life, if you do not have the peace that only Jesus can give, I tell you this, your heart will be filled with sense of trouble, with the sense of fear. Because uh, let's face it, you have no idea you know, uh, what the, uh, tomorrow holds, and you have no control of so many things that in this uh, world, as a fallen uh, a creature living in a short time and space in this world, that uh, the world does give some level of peace. And that's why Jesus said, I give to you not as the world gives. And the world gives sense of peace. You know, if you go to the uh, GP and talking about I'm having trouble, you know, because of whatever, and I cannot sleep well, you know, I'm having just the high blood pressure, I got this and that, and what is the, some of the things that uh, your GP will, you know, uh, uh, introduce? Oh, why don't you, you know, uh, go on a long holiday and, uh, or have a deep breath, you know, new breathing, and uh, do some kind of medi uh, meditations, or a sense of self-control, don't blame yourselves, and uh, introducing some counselors, and... Um, mind control, read some self-help books and so on. And I'm not just trashing them all, but I'm saying that they, that's the sort of thing that the world can give in a sense of giving peace of mind. But what Jesus promised is completely different from that. And some of the people try to just uh, bridge the, uh, uh, the peace that God and the Jesus can give is something relate to that. So there's, it's going to the Christian you know, sort of things as a, some sort of meditation with the deep breathings and all sort of weird things. But no, Jesus made it very clear. My peace I give you is, my peace I give you is not like those things. Only Jesus can give. And peace I leave with you. Okay? So, and once you receive that peace that Jesus can only give, one thing is clear. Even in your circumstance, you are troubled and you are you have the legitimate reason to be afraid of so many things. But it will take you up to the new level. And you're not going to be uh, bothered by all of these things. So let's see. When you see the word a peace all throughout the Bible, especially New Testament Bible, it is heavily linked with the message of gospel. So let me read it to you in uh, Romans chapter 5, uh, uh, verse 1. It is the uh, writing of uh, Apostle Paul. And it says, Therefore, having been justified by God, I, I mean by faith, we have peace with God uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is very significant why Jesus said peace right after he was resurrected because what he did spiritually you know, in between holy God and uh, a sinful man. And he took the, all the consequence of sin that you and I should bear, and he dealt with it. And now Apostle Paul emphasizing that 
whoever believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, now you should know that uh, you are no longer an enemy of God. Did you know that the people who do not know the Lord, their spiritual state is that they are at war with holy God? You know, not that God hate any of the sinners and so on, but because of the nature, God is holy. And by nature, we are born as a sinners. But until our sin issue has been dealt with, that we are at enmity with God. And that's the, one of the main thrusts of the book of Romans. But thanks to God, what happened? His son Jesus, he died in your place of sin. Do you believe that? Jesus died as if you died for your own sin. Jesus took all your sin upon himself and died on the cross. And he paid in full. On the third day, he was resurrected. And now he's giving the news of peace that you no longer have to carry this heavy burden of sin and its own consequences because I have paid in full. Now you enjoy the new state between you and God, not as an enemy of God, but as a child of God. Who can say amen to that? So you are a son and daughter of God. You know, that is a major, major difference. And Paul was emphasizing that you should enjoy, you should know that you have been justified by faith in Jesus Christ through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we have peace with God. We have a oneness with God, no longer division, no longer fighting, okay? And uh, uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 15, it says, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of what? Peace. You will see again and again, you know, Apostle Paul, when he talks about the uh, different spiritual gifts, when it comes to the, uh, the, the shoes, what was the shoes? The sandal of? Preaching the gospel of peace. Anything to do with the gospel, always one of the most common words that is linked with the sharing gospel, evangelism, anything to do with the gospel, message of gospel. You know, what is the uh, uh, message of Jesus when he come for the first time, first coming of Jesus? It is the message of hope. It is the message of peace. You can have peace with God, no longer as an enemy, but now as a child of God. Jesus made that possible by his death. So we have this message that we got to preach the message of peace because of what Christ had done. I want to ask this question. Are you at peace with God? Find your heart. Search your heart. Do you have still the sense of enmity? the sense of hostility with holy God, and you feel like, I'm not right. I don't think God can accept me. I cannot even accept myself. I don't consider myself as a good person. I don't even consider myself this and that. I don't know how God, holy God, can take me. That's the uh, accusation of the devil. But you do not look at yourself. You do not look at your own con uh, just uh, behavior or everything. But by faith, not by action, but by faith in Jesus Christ and what takes place, that you can have peace with God. And that is the message that Apostle Paul preached. And that is the message that I want to tell you. And that is the message that Jesus Christ, he was risen from the dead, that was the first word that he wanted to communicate to his disciples. I know what you are going through. I know the confusion. I know the, the horror that you have witnessed. But take heart. And uh, I have the message of hope. Okay? And um, so, let's face it. Jesus, he brought the peace. He became the peace between God, holy God, and sinful man. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but to have life that is eternal. But then how do we receive? You know, how do we enjoy? You know, just uh, 
uh, looking at the uh, same chapter, you know, uh, next scripture, John chapter 20, verse 22. And when he had said this, you know, speaking all about peace be with you, you know, peace to you, and so on, and he breathed on them. You know, it's just like a, when was the last time anybody breathed on you, right? You know, hope, you know, that those people brush their teeth and uh, it's just a sort of things, you know, it's like, Jesus breathed on, it's a highly unusual thing. Jesus breathed on all these disciples who were so afraid and so on, and he breathed on them and said to them, what was the word? With the breath that he was actually physically breathing on them and said, receive, everybody says, receive the Holy Spirit. What comes in your mind that when someone breathing on somebody else? Do you remember what took place in Garden of Eden when God created Adam and Eve? After he created Adam and he gave what? He breathed his breath into the nostril of Adam. And then when he received the breath of God and what, what he become and that his flesh become a living thing, living being. And this is the moment. New humanity will be a new humanity through the new sense of creation. This is by Jesus Christ. By receiving the fresh new breath. Breath of Jesus. The breath that, you know, breath of God. It's the pneuma, you know, is the Spirit of God. And Jesus said, it is better for you that I go away so that I can send you, what? Holy Spirit. And He will change the whole thing. He will give you the kind of peace that you never knew before. And He will give you the uh, dunamis power that you never knew before. And uh, He will guide you and He will fulfill all the lack you may have in your life. Okay, so I want to just uh, give this. And how do, we, how do we make sure that I am in peace with God and I enjoy peace with God? It is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So 50 days later on, from the moment that Jesus breathed out his uh, breath, and then they did receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? And, um, and here's... Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17, it says, And he came and preached a peace to you who, are, who were afar up and to those who were near. So uh, Paul, once again, he was talking about Jesus. He came and preached what? Instead of word at a, a gospel, he just used the word peace. What kind of peace? Peace between holy God and sinful man. And uh, to you who were far off, who are the far off people? They are the Gentiles, they are the Romans, they are the Greeks, and they are the Koreans, and they are the Kiwis, and all the rest, non-Jewish, basically. And to those who were near, who were the near people, they are the Jewish people. You know, he came and preached the peace to all of them, whether they are Jew or Gentile. For through him, that capital H, him, is who? It's Jesus Christ. We both have access by one Spirit to the Father. How can we enjoy the fellowship with the Holy God as a sinful man? First of all, you need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. You've got to believe in Him. And what is the next one? You receive the Holy Spirit. Then you truly have fellowship with the Holy God through the Holy Spirit that is in you. Okay? And one of the signs of the Holy Spirit who is dwelling in any human being is this. Uh, but the fruit of the Spirit, this is the Spirit, not just the human Spirit, it is the capital S, it is the Holy Spirit, is, first thing is what? Love. Now you have the love of a divine love, agape love in your heart, and the joy, joy that is not conditioned by the circumstance, and the peace also that is not, you know, just based on, whatever you're breathing, or whatever other circumstance in your life. And now you have the Holy Spirit, and He will give you love and joy and peace and all the rest. 
Amen? And I want to tell you, as the message is quite simple this morning, and uh, the Lord wants to give you peace in your life, especially those who are bombarded with this so many thoughts that, you know, that some of you, you cannot sleep because you try to sleep, but in your mind, just the one problem after another. How many of you can identify it? It's just this picture of things to uh, fix and things to uh, correct in your life. Another concern and another thing keep popping up. And uh, it's become quickly midnight. It becomes a, a 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. And then you cannot shut it down because there's no wholeness. There's no peace. But God can stop that. God can give you the peace that the world have no idea. The world cannot give. The first of all, you got to make sure that you are in peace relationship with the Holy God, Heavenly Father, through His Son. And the create a room in your heart because God wants to just start a new thing in your life. Amen? So I want you to just uh, close your eyes and then I want to pray for a people. Whatever the point that today's message that you felt like the Lord has nudged you and this is for you. And I see that there's a broken peace in your life. But I want to give you that peace. Peace be with you. And uh, why Jesus said twice? Because uh, that was the thing they did not have. And that was the thing they really needed. So don't cover up your face thinking that I'm all good. You know, everything's all taking right and I'm all just a, a, a strong and mature Christians and everything's all working well, well, you know what? Let's face it. If you have broken peace in your heart, you got to let God know. Lord, pick me. I'm right here. Lord, visit me. I do need your peace. Why don't you just stand up in your place? To just acknowledge. Just, to, just to simply open your hands to the Lord. Lord, I need your peace. I'm, I'm busy. Even for the work of God, I, I've been busy. I've been anxious. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And it just I don't have the real uh, tranquility, this sense of harmony with God and sense of harmony with other people. And I just real driven. But you got to know it is available through the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, and uh, you don't need more trouble. You don't need more concerns in fear in your life. What you need is that you need more peace of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I want you to actually open your heart and also that uh, embrace the Spirit of the Lord to come into your life. Take charge and take control. We as a church, we want to do that. Lord, we want to open up not just the physical doors, but our hearts, our attitude. We want the move of the Holy Spirit in this church. We want the move of Holy Spirit in my life. If that's you, you stand up and ask the Lord. And either, Lord, I need more work and the more power of the Holy Spirit in my life right now. Because Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. You know, you got to have the certain attitude toward the Holy Spirit. You know, don't be resistant, but just to open your heart, open your hands and, and toward heaven and say, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit. And I need this transcending peace that only Jesus can give. You know, I'm not going to drag it long, but I'm going to pray for the peace of God. I want to pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to manifest in your life. If that's you, you stand up and I want to pray for you. Father God, I pray, you know, as a, a servant of God and I just deliver the message that you've been just a pounding on my heart this all through this week, Lord, because I know that I know that you want to give that to those who are hungry, for those who are thirsty, indicating, Lord, I need the shalom of God. I need the new uh, uh, relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And Lord, I need the power of Holy Spirit. It will reorganize my life. It will change everything. I cannot do it on my own hand. I cannot do it with my own ability. I'm not going to manipulate my heart just like the, the people who chase after this false sense of peace in the world. I don't want anything else but the peace 
that only Jesus can give, peace that Jesus promised. And here we are, Lord, as the children of God, we're standing in the presence of God, and we want your shalom. We want your peace. We want your spirit of peace to permeate our life, Lord, and we welcome you. Come right into my life, Lord. Come right into our life, Lord. Come right into this church, Notion New Life Church, that the spirit of peace will guide us and strengthen us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Only by faith in Jesus Christ that we can claim this peace and we give you glory and honor. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the peace that you are giving to us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.